Our video today is brought to you by Card Kingdom, and from Black Friday through Cyber Monday, CardKingdom.com customers will earn 10% back in store credit, and this includes singles, seal product, accessories, and apparel. Terms and conditions apply. Details available at CardKingdom.com. Hello, everyone. It's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Much Brew About Nothing. So we have a spicy one this week. This was last week's Fishbowl Thursday back deck, infinite back combo for Pioneer, kind of a commander-esque combo, trying to get the Locust God on the battlefield with something that lets us keep drawing cards when creatures come into play to go infinite, make a bunch of tokens, kill our opponent on the spot. So I'm excited to give this deck a shot. We're going to do a quick deck tag, kind of refresher, go over what the deck's about, what it's trying to do, and jump right into the gameplay, see how the deck actually works. Before we do, a super quick rebuild. If you haven't already, it would be amazing of you. If you can take a second, click that subscribe button down at the bottom of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So let's talk infinite back combo, starting with the back of our back combo, which is back call. So we're not really mostly trying to cast the call half, like maybe sometimes we will make some birds, but really the big deal here is back is a two-bit of sorcery, makes it so whenever a creature enters the battlefield this turn, we get to draw a card if we want to. We may draw a card, which is actually very important. So what we are trying to set up in this deck is basically casting back and then getting a Locust God into play. If we can do that, Locust God is going to trigger back to let us draw a card. When we draw a card, that's going to make a 1-1 Insect, which is then going to trigger back to let us draw a card, which is going to make an Insect, which is going to trigger back to draw a card, which is going to make an Insect. We do that again and again and again and again. We can eventually stop, remember, because back is a May, but most importantly, those Insects have haste. So if we can pull this off, we can make something like 40 hasty 1-1 one, one flyers and just kill our opponent on the spot. So this is kind of the end game of the deck. Casting a back and a Locust God, but we have a bunch of ways to get to this point from Weird Board State. So first off, let's say we have Beck and Neoform. We can use Neoform to either directly sacrifice a 5-drop, a Samet, a Sage of Falls, a Goblin Dark Dweller to get the Locust God, or if we don't have a 5-drop, but we have a 4-drop like Prime Seeker Vanifar, Breaching Hippocamp, Pink Arendelar, Shalai, we can sacrifice the 4-drop to get God Goblin Dark Dweller, which lets us flash back the Neo form to then get the six drop and proceed to win the game with infinite tokens. On the other hand, maybe we have Neo form in Prime Speaker Vanifar. This is where Prime Speaker Vanifar is very important to the deck. With Prime Speaker Vanifar in any creature on the battlefield, we should be able to loop our way into our Locust God. So let's say we start with the one drop like Gilded Goose. We can set Gilded Goose, get Corridor Monitor, which untaps Prime Speaker. We can set Corridor Monitor, which gets Renegade Rallier, which reanimates Corridor Monitor to untap Prime Speaker. Then we can Attack Renegade Rallier to get Breaching Hippocamp, which lets us untap Prime Speaker. Then Hippocamp can get Samet, which for one mana untaps Prime Speaker. Then stacking Samet gets us to Locust God. And then, last but not least, we can Neoform away the Prime Speaker itself to get our backup win con, which is Sage of the Falls. Sage of the Falls is basically a five mana creature that replaces Beck in the combo. Whenever a non human creature comes into play, we're able to loot. So we can do the same thing with Locust God. If we get Locust God with Sage of Falls, a non human comes into play, like the Insect from Locust God. Trigger Sage lets us loot, triggers Locust God to make a token, which triggers Sage to let us loot to draw a card to trigger Locust God. Infinite tokens again, kill our opponent. We can also just get there with the same loop if we have Beck Call, obviously just cast Beck, then Prime Speaker up the chain to Locust God. Infinite tokens win the game. So that's the goal of the deck. We got a bunch of weird ways to get there. Otherwise, we have a few value creatures. Since we have Prime Seeker Vanifar, we have Neoform. We can tutor out one of those pretty easily. So Reflector Mage for defense. P and Karen are good at clogging up the ground. Shalai can protect our combo pieces. We do have Oko FIFA crowds, mostly just because it's a good value card. Gives us removal, gives us chump blockers, buys us time while we set up our combo kill. Couple of once upon a times to dig through our deck, which is especially important for fixing our mana, which is admittedly kind of out there because we have so many colors in our deck. So we have a bunch of dual lands, some fabled passages, a bunch of basic lands. Sideboard wise, we have a few spells for protecting our combo. Display of Dominance, Disdainful Stroke, Mystical Dispute. So counter spells and Display of Dominance. Settle the Wreckage for the aggro matchup. And then a bunch of creatures that we can find with our Neoforms and our Vanifars. Revoker to shut down Planeswalkers. Ooze for Life Gain, Graveyard Hate, Knight of Autumn. Life Gain, Artifact Enchantment Hate, Even Mind Sensor. Really good against Hour of Promise in the Field of Dead decks. And that is 
infinite back combo for Pioneer. And that's our Munch of Brew deck for this week. So let's jump into some gameplay. See just how practical it actually is to back into Locust God. Infinite AC tokens with the game. Hopefully we pull it off sometime. So let's see how it goes. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoy it. And I'll be back in a bit with the wrap up. All right. Much brew about nothing time. We are playing some back combo in Pioneer. And this ad, we got the Vanifar. We don't have a secondary combo piece, but we got a goose, and we have a like kind of reasonable value hand where we can just ramp into Vanifars and Pias and whatnot. Ooh, fed it. Ugh, control. Ugh. I assume control is one of our tougher matchups. Sweepers, counters, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Not ideal for what we're trying to do. Alright. Botanical Langdom. Honk honk. Get down the goose. Pass the turd. <laughs> Uh, I do like P and Karen, though. That card is good against control, and I guess Samet is sort of good against control, and Prime Speaker, if it sticks, is obviously good. Not sure what... <sighs> oh. Oh, okay. Well, now I feel much better. <laughs> if our opponent's playing zombies, now I feel a lot better about where we're at, because uh, we could potentially just combo off against zombies before they can kill us. And cards like P and Karen are great against zombies. We can just clog up the board and buy us time. Feeling much better about where we're at now. Opponent. Uh, we're just gonna make a food here, and the next turn, probably Prime Speaker, and try to set up for winning Death Baron. Sure, make a food. Can't block Relentless Dead even if we wanted to, thanks to Menace. Opponent hits us to 17. Sure, sure, sure. And opponent passing. Hmm. More Vanifars. Well, I mean, let's run out Vanifar. We're not under enough pressure where we risk dying, and this does, if our opponent doesn't have interaction, this does set us up to win over the course of a couple turns. We can, so what we're looking at is next turn we can pee in Karen, sack it to get Sage of the Falls, leave behind a couple of chump blockers, and then the following turn we can Sam it, turn that into Locust God Infinite, infinite, infinite. So opponent's going to need removal. If they're just on zombie beatdowns, it's not going to be fast enough. Okay, Regisar. Still not going to be fast enough. Regisar's fine. All we're really scared of is removal, because we get to run out this Pian Karen. <sighs> is there any reason to play Samet? Not really. We can't win this turn, so we got to wait an extra turn anyway. Yeah, let's just run out Pian Karen, if we can figure out how to tap for double red. There we go. Pian Karen. Make a couple of Thopters. And, I mean, this does mean our opponent can potentially ruin our combo if they draw a removal spell. But we don't really have another option if we want to trade a combo. So we just get Sage. Sage, loot, discard, I guess, the land? We don't really need two lands. And, uh, all right, pass the turn. We survive this turn by chump blocking. Then next turn, in theory, we just go infinite. All right, no removal. Just run out some zombies. <laughs> Run out some zombies, opponent. Opponent. Regisar. Discarded to Regisar. Three cards in hand. Combat. And attacks. Opponent attacks, attacks. Well, we will block Rotting Regisar. Down to 11. But, all right, do you have removal? Like, as long as there's no removal, we just have the win. Oh, yes. Ren not Murderous Rider. Not Murderous Rider. Give us a Regisar. Another Regisar. Opponent. Uh, Relentless Dead. That's also fine. Okay. Well... Uh, let's see if our opponent has instant speed removal. We draw Reflector Mage. And, yeah, I mean, I guess we just, I guess we just go for it. Temple Temple Garden. I mean, we can start with Reflector Mage. We have Vandifar, so we, we don't necessarily have to play Samet. We can just work our way up the chain. So, Reflector Mage. Bounce. Guess Relentless Dead, since it has Menace? I don't think it really, I mean, the question is, does our opponent have removal? If they don't have removal, we just win. Sack Reflector Mage, Vanifar. Get a Hippo Camp. Hippo Camp. Untap Vanifar. We don't want to loot in case we somehow, like, loot into uh, both of our Locust Gods or something silly. Prime Speaker, Sack, Hippo Camp. Get our second Samet. Make some white mana. Untap Vanifar. And, all right, this is it. Sack Sabbat. Locust God, the pretty one, and combo achieved. All right, opponent. I mean, if you got an instant speed removal spell, this is your time. Start looting through the deck, making our flyers. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I think we got it. If our opponent had a removal, I think they would have used it by now. So we can make yeah, about 40 more one ones with haste. <laughs> oh, this deck actually is kind of working. Uh, okay. This deck is actually pretty sweet. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep discarding. Keep discarding. Discard. Temple Garden. Sure. And opponent sees what's happening, scoops it up. They see the flyers coming, and that went pretty well. That went very well. Hmm. Interesting. 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 Um. Heh. Zombies, zombies, zombies. I guess we just bring in the two settles. Go down, maybe Shalai, and uh, one once upon a time. Try it like that. Cutting once upon a time is a smidge on the risky side. Uh, okay. I mean, we're not especially close to comboing off with this hand, but it is a hand that seems, seems like it should work. All right, we'll keep. I mean, we get Goose into maybe Reflector Mage to bounce something. And we have a Settle, which is our secret get-out-of-jail-free card against aggro decks. Opponent, pass it. Now play a Forest. Play a Gilded Goose. Pass the turn. Opponent, Dread Wander. Oh, one lander? Okay. Opponent, passes. Locust God. Well, play Temple Garden. I think we just run out Reflector Mage and bounce Dread Wander. Pass the turn. This might just be a hard cast Locust God kind of game. Relentless dead. All right, opponent does hit a land. And passes. Now play an island, go into combat. Get in with Reflector Mage. Hit our opponent and pass the turn. Dread Wander for our opponent. Returns. Crip Breaker. Yup, opponent combat attacks. Okay, blowout time. Well, semi-blowout. Run out Bounding Crosses. Untap Reflector Mage. Double block Relentless Dead. Opponent can get it back to their hand, but this still slows our opponent down. For no real loss of value. Block block. Opponent pays the one, I assume. Yeah, okay. Sure, sure, sure. And passes. We draw. Fabled Passage. Um, well, go to combat. Hit our opponent. Play Sacred Foundry tap past the turn so i think we're just going to make a food and then and then locust god put it death baron yep combat is our opponent afraid of attacking they might be all right gets in well we will just make a food take our beats untap play the mountain run out locust god go to combat attack hit our opponent down to eight all right, we're pretty close to just getting the aggro win here. Opponent, untaps. Another Death Baron, sure. Grows the dorks. Combat, hits us. We will take it. We untap. We draw. Oh, oh, that doesn't quite win us the game. We make an insect. We go to combat. We do some attacking. Hit our opponent. Yup, blocks with Crypt Breaker. Down to three. Gilded Goose. Make a food. Fabled Passage, past the turn, and I mean, I think we're good, especially with this settle in hand and with food on the battlefield. I don't think our opponent can kill us this turn. So unless they can answer Locust God permanently, we should, we should have it. Not quite with a combo, but we'll take it. <laughs> Wins a win. Uh, opponent, Death Baron, sure. Oh man, all right. Well, opponent, combat, and uh, scoops it up. And that went pretty well for our deck. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Sweet, sweet. All right. Much brew about nothing time. We are looking to combo off. Playing some Prime Speaker Vanifar, Beck Call, Wombo Combo. And uh, I think we got a mulligan in this. We have Mana Dorks. We have Beck. Oh, uh, 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 this sounds even worse. Ay, 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 ay. All right. This we will keep. Um, Dark Dwellers to the bottom, Gilded Goose to the bottom. All right, well, I guess we're a dirty, uh, dirty Oko player. <laughs> I guess we're turn two Okoing and hoping for the best. Glacial Fortress for our about it. Uh, I feel so bad about this. Botanical Sanctum, Gilded Goose, Honk Honk, pass the turn. Opponent, Cycle Sensor, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Plays a tap land, passes. Well, all right, I guess we Oko. Untap land. Oko, oh dear, uh, make a food, pass the turn, oh man, I don't even know if I'd post this match, people hate Oko, we're supposed to be going infinite with, with Locust God, not doing this, <laughs> but, I mean, we are playing blue-white control, so I guess, 
I guess doing this is fine. Ugh. Um, well, food. Become the 3-3. Three, three, go to combat. Attack you. Sacred Foundry tapped past the turn. We're just going to make another food, I guess, with Gilded Goose. Opponent cycles Sensor. Yeah, Sensor doesn't seem great since we don't really need to cast things at the moment. Opponent. Teferi. Time Raveler. Bounces our food. Uh, yeah, we can't really stop that. Plays a land. Well, we will make a food. Untap. Food. 3-3. Three, three. Temple Garden. Uh, tapped. Go to combat. Kill Teferi. I mean, I guess we just keep doing this Oko thing until our opponent makes us stop doing this Oko thing. Or until we draw into a way to get out of this. Another Teferi? Narset. Sure. That is a lot of Planeswalkers. Opponent takes down. Gets Narset. And passes. Well, make a food. <laughs> oh, such, a, such a uncool way to win a game of Magic, but it's working. Play a land. Go to combat. Kill Narset. Hit our opponent. Pass the turn. Uh, about it. Another Teferi. Now, opponent's playing a lot of Planeswalkers, but they're not really making that much progress. Yup. Bounces the token. Finds a land. Tapped. Well, make a food. All we've done this game is play Gilded Goose and, and Oko. That's basically been literally this entire game. Uh, food becomes a 3-3, three, three. go to combat, kill Teferi, hit our opponent, and pass the turn. Maybe we should be leaving these Teferis at 1. We could potentially be presenting lethal if we weren't continually Teferiing. Alright, opponent plays Teferi. Wow, going to draw a card. Alright, I'll make a food. Field of Ruin. Opponent passes, untap some lands. Sure. Well, we... Land of War Elves. Uh, food, 3-3. Three, three. I guess everything's got to go at Teferi. Got to get it off the battlefield. Opponent loses Teferi. Um, yeah, pass the turn. <laughs> oh, this is... <laughs> okay, opponent, tapping manas. <laughs> wow, I guess this is showing... Opponent's going to dig through time. I guess this is showing the power of Oko. Like, we have done nothing. We mulliganed to five, we played Gilded Goose, we played Oko, and we've killed four Planeswalkers, three Teferis, <laughs> and uh, are kind of, like, relatively in a decent spot in this game. Opponent, seven mana, approach of the second sons. That is a concern. Well, make a food. If they have another one, that is going to make us lose. We untap. Oh, that's not great. Ooh, six? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh my goodness, that does it. Oh my goodness, Samet. Samet saves the day. Oh my god. All right. Uh, Samet, you become a 3-3. Three, three. I think that's exact. I think that's our only draw to win if our opponent has approached the second sons. That's exacties. Okay. <laughs> ah, Samet. All right. Well, Oko did most of the work, but Samet did come through at the end pretty impressively. Disdainful Stroke, Mystic Dispute in, uh, probably Revoker in. Once upon a time down, Reflector Mage down. Uh, Shalai down. And what's our last, what's our last cut? We need all of our combo pieces. Yeah, I guess it's one land war. Let's try it like that. Uh, this sand is very land heavy. Yeah, we're going to mulligan that. All right, I guess we keep this. Put corridor monitor to the bottom. Well, this is going to be tricky. I'm not sure. Maybe we can draw a mana dork. That would be sweet. Opponent, irrigated farmland. Prime speaker, Vanna far. Sure. Yeah, going to be a tiny bit slow without any mana dorks. Hollowed Fountain tapped. Land go. Hollowed Fountain tapped. Opponent. Basin. Um, Breeding Pool tapped. I don't really think there's any point in running Oko into Sensor. If we're gonna get something countered, we'd rather it be countered by a real, a real card, not a Force Spike. Opponent. Land. Plus it's less as potentially Disdainful Stroke. Well, we can't Disdainful Stroke that. Yup. Opponent. Teferi takes it up. Well, we untap, play a mountain, Oko, make a food, pass the turn. I mean, we're not that far away from winning, but we really need nothing to go wrong, which is asking a lot. Opponent, going to Pithing Needle. Hmm, yeah, that is, that is a bit of a problem. 
We can run out Vanifar, but it's just going to get Teferi, and Teferi's shutting down our Disdainful Stroke. Opponent takes up Teferi, plays a land. Untapped. We draw. Well, yeah, all right. Uh, play Fabled Passage. Vanifar. Not that it's going to go far <laughs> because of this Teferi, but we tried. Opponent. Instant Speed, Supreme Verdict. Yeah. Uh, this Teferi's really, really making things difficult. Since it's turning off our counter magic... And it's still going to be able to... Hmm. Opponent bounces our food, draws a card. Elspeth. Yeah, can't stop it. So I think our hope is to be able to combo win somehow. Opponent passes. Vanifar. I mean, if there's some way that we untap and our opponent doesn't have anything, we can just win with Vanifar. We have all the combo pieces we need to win this game. I'm not feeling super confident that that's going to work, but... That is a plan. Opponent catches into Fairy, bounces Vanifar again, plays a land. Soldiers. Lyra. Okay. We would actually like to draw a land here so we could play Vanifar and leave up Disdainful Stroke. Opponent gets it and hits us. Untap. Well, actually, oh, my end. I hope we have a land. Crack Fabled Passage. Take a Plains. Vanifar. Pass the turn. So we don't have Disdainful Stroke, but we do have this Mystical Dispute for a blue spell. Opponent, Island. to fairy. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, that, uh, that beats us. All right. Well, that went a smidge worse. This feels like it's probably not our best matchup, but we're going to keep trying. All right. We get to play first. Well, all right. I guess we can go for our, our dirty, dirty Oko win. It worked in game one. Maybe that's just uh, our best way to keep up in this this matchup is just Oko. As sad as it is to say, opponent. Tap land. Well, it's Oko time. Planes. Oko. Make a food. Pass the turn. Opponent. Plays a land. Passes. Well, play Botanical Sanctum. Food. Turn it on. Go to combat. Hit our opponent. Gilded Goose. Make a food. Pass the turn. Opponent. Cycles. Illumination. Gotta find a Wrath. We have our opponent under a decent amount of pressure. Or an answer to Oko, I guess. Planes for our opponent. Yeah, this just might not be our best combo matchup with all the counters and Wraths. This might be the, the jank amount with Oko matchup. Opponent to Fairy. Bounces the food. Well, we get to make another one. Yup. Opponent passes. Oh, we are so close. Well, turn on our food. Go to combat. Kill to fairy. Play Vanifar. Hope for no supreme verdict, please. Glacial Fortress. Does our opponent have the wrath? That's the big question. Opponent passing. Oh, oh we could go for the combo kill. Opponent could have a... Hmm... How do we do this? We can do Vanifar. Oh, we took out Sahili, didn't we? That would have protected us potentially from Settle the Wreckage. How do we how do we do this now? Is there some shenanigans we can do with this Vanifar? Hmm. I'll turn on the food. Go to combat. Attack. Opponent takes it. <sighs> Pass the turn. Feels so strange to do this, but if our opponent ever taps down and we still have Vanifar, then we can go infinite. We have the ability to go infinite in hand, but we need our opponent to tap down or out. Well, all right. Yeah, I kind of wish we left in Sahili because of Settle the Wreckage. Make a food, make a food, untap, play the forest, turn on the food, go to combat. Yeah, I mean, attack for lethal. There is settle. Ugh, yup. Well, we get three lands, and I guess we pass. Ugh! Yeah, I, I think we sideboarded wrongly by taking out by taking out Shalai to protect against settle. Declaration in stone on our geese. Well, sack of food at red. Get our geese got. Run out Samet. Hollowed fountain. Untapped. Opponent. Yeah, this is a hard combo matchup with all this disruption. Opponent. Passes. 
Well, uh, turn on a clue token. Go to combat. Attack. Oh my god, so many settle the wreckages. Well, prime speaker. Pass the... Ugh. Corridor monitor. Pass the turn. Ugh, two settles! If only we had sideboarded differently. Alright, go ahead, opponent. Untaps. Plays a land. We still have the win in hand if our opponent taps out. Cast out. Going to hit Oko. Interesting. Okay. Another Teferi? Oh, Ashiok. Oh, Ashiok! Okay. Actually, not being able to search our library shuts down... Oh, no. Our combo. Temple Garden. Go to combat. Oh, my goodness. Ashiok! Attach, a attack Ashiok! Oh! Oh, we had the combo in our opponent and Ashiok on tap. Oh my goodness, this is so brutal. Opponent plays a land. We have two Neoforms in hand. We have Vanifar. We have infinite things, but we can't search our library. Opponent, what's the follow-up? It's an Elspeth. That means Ashiok is never going to die. Oh no. Wow. <laughs> oh my god, another Neoform. <laughs> <laughs> we can never kill the Elspeth. We can never activate our stuff. Yeah, I think uh, I think that does it. <laughs> All right, on to the next. All right, much brew about nothing time. We are playing some infinite Beck combo. Trying to go infinite with uh, insects of all things in Pioneer, and we're gonna keep this hand. It is pretty close to being what we want. We have Neoform Beck Call, which can allow us to go infinite. We need to, ooh, all right. Basically, we need four mana, a four drop. So we're actually, this might be a turn, hmm. There's a chance that this is going to be a turn for kill. Shall I Neoform into Dark Dweller, Dark Dweller into Locust God with Beck Call? Voice Resurgence, okay. I mean, we gotta dodge removal on Shalai, I guess. And play Spire Bluff. Sack of Food. Run out Shalai. This protects us from Thought Seize as well. So, okay, we have we have the win next turn if nothing goes wrong. We have the win. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's see it, opponent. Are we just getting the turn four combo kill? Oh, come on, come on. No no murderous uh, rider on Shalai, please. Just play your creatures, opponent. Corsair. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. All right. This is about as good as our deck could do. Opponent. Passing. So, we need to play Forest. Uh, green, blue. How can this go wrong? So, we back. This goes wrong if we dr <laughs> Uh, I don't think it can go wrong, actually. I think we're good. Neoform. Shalai. Into Dark Dweller. Dark Dweller flashes back Neoform. We draw a card. Actually, let's just say no. We don't need to draw a card. Neoform, flash it back, sacking Dark Dweller. Get a super sweet Masterpiece Locust God. And now the fun begins. Uh, yes. Always yield. Yes. And this is 40-ish hasty 1-1 one -one flyers. That's as good as it gets. That's as good as it gets. That's as good as it gets. That is the plan. Whoo. All right. Uh, maybe this deck actually can work. Huh. <laughs> Ten. An opponent, they see what happens. They see what's happening and scoops it up. And that is turn four. Not truly infinite because we're going to run out of our deck in 37 more cards. But infinite enough. Turn four, 50 hasty flying damage. Whoo. Okay. Uh, that was beautiful. I don't even know if we change anything. I think we might just... <laughs> directly run it back and uh and try to do that again because that was that was as good as it gets all right uh this hand i guess we'll keep it we have once upon a time we have a bunch of back calls but they're not super helpful at the moment opponent passes oh second <laughs> second sam is not what we wanted to see not even close to what we wanted to see uh no land oh my goodness oh dear well, there is a downside to playing all these colors. Opponent plays a tap land and passes. Oh boy. Oh, this is the worst hand of all time. Pass the turn. Paradise Druid for our opponent. Ugh. 
All right, planes go. Yeah, this is much less exciting. I guess maybe we should have just mulligan this hand. I assume that we would be able to fix our mana with our Once Upon a Time, but hitting zero lands and zero green sources uh, greatly worked against that plan. Huh. Another back. Oh, boy. All right, pass the turn. This is not ideal. Siege Rhino for our opponent. Well, this one feels like it's sli- Ugh. All right. Well, we're going to concede. Ha. Huh. Whiffing on that once upon a time was pretty brutal. I guess arguably, arguably maybe we just should not have kept that hand. Ugh. We got betrayed by once upon a time, though. That might actually be the, the issue there. All right. We get to play first. Huh. <sighs> All right. I mean, I guess we keep this. It's a, it's a oko -E hand, and Oko can be pretty powerful. Breeding pool, untapped, and Llanowar Elves. Pass the turn. Overgrown Tomb for our opponent, tapped. Untapped land would be pretty good. Well, tap land. All right, all right, all right. Well, we have Vanifar. We're one land away from actually using it. Hopefully this elf lives. Or if it dies, it dies to something like Assassin's Trophy. Opponent, Paradise Druid. All right, crack this. Grab a... Hmm. I guess we grab a planes. Untap. Hopefully we draw land for Vanifar. We do not. Ugh. All right. Well, dirty, dirty Oko player time, unfortunately. Mega food. Pass the turn. Uh, opponent. Lo hmm. Okay. Interesting. Well, I assume this means our combo is going to be offline. Names back. Okay. So going infinite, not going to be possible this game, unfortunately. Opponent passes. All right, we draw a land, play a land, play Vanifar. Although it's a little, a little sadder when we can't go infinite. Like Vanifar is still fine. We can do value-y things with it, but not as exciting when we're setting up an infinite combo. Um, yeah, let's just make a food. Pass the turn. Can our opponent kill the Vanifar? Rhino. All right, there's a Rhino. Sure. Opponent passing. We draw Sacred Foundry. Hmm. How do we want to do this? Let's just run out Reflector Mage. Bounce Siege Rhino. Prime Speaker. Sack Reflector Mage. Get Breaching Hippocamp. Untap Prime Speaker. Prime Speaker. Sack Breaching Hippocamp. Get... Salmon. I guess we can go infinite with Sage of the Falls next turn. Get Salmon. Sacred Foundry. Salmon. Untap Prime Speaker. Sack Salmon. Get a Locust God. Um, yeah, let's make a food into a 3-3. Pass the turn. So we're actually, we're set up with our backdoor combo here if Locust God lives. Because we can, Breaching Hippocamp... Prime Speaker into Sage and go infinite that way. We do have a, a backup plan. All right, opponent kills Oko. That's fine. I don't think our opponent realizes that we can still go infinite. Cast Murderous Rider. They definitely do not realize that we still go infinite here. Opponent passes. We draw another Locust God. We make a 1-1. One, one. So all we need to do is Breaching Hippocamp. Uh, target whatever. Doesn't really matter. Prime Speaker, Sack Hippocamp, get Sage, start the loop, do the same thing, Infinite Flyers, and we got there. We got there. We got Infinite in the end. Yes, 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 loot, 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 Infinite Flyers, through a Lost Legacy, which is incredibly impressive for our deck. Like, our opponent Lost legacy our main combo piece, and we still, with our backup combo, managed to, uh, managed to go Infinite. Yup, discard everything, discard everything, discard everything. We need 18 flyers to be lethal. We're getting close. 15, 16, 17. And opponent scoops it up. Woo, back door, back door, back door combo. We will take it. Sweet, 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 sweet. Whoo, that was sweet. All right. Much brew about nothing time. We are looking to combo off with back call. Infinite back call combo. And this is one of the hands that makes me a little sad because we're probably just going to turn to Oko and feel like a, a dirty, dirty Oko player. But opponent, botanical sanctum. Oh, no. That could mean Nexus. Well, that's breeding pool untapped. 
run out Lanowals past the turn. Opponent. Botanical Sanctum. Oh dear. Definitely Nexus. Not sure if we'd actually beat Nexus. Opponent. Oh. Trickster. Okay. Uh well, we will play Sacred Foundry tapped. Past the turn. Is this blue green tempo? Opponent. Bounces. Our Lanamore hits us. Well, okay. We are officially dirty Oko players. <laughs> Play an Oko, make a food, pass the turn. Opponent, combat, gets in at Oko. Sure, done a four. Oh, uh, well, turn on our food, play Lanamore Elves, play Fabled Passage. And yeah, let's just pass. I think we want to, we're not going to attack here. I think we're just going to once upon a time. Yup, well, we will once upon a time. Take, ugh, let's take the eyelid. We could have taken Vanifar, but it might just be better to run out Locust God. Opponent, combat. Attacks. Sure. Hits our Oko. The real question is how many counters does our opponent have? Well, Crack Fabled Passage. Grab a Mountain. Untap. Hmm. <clears throat> Play Corridor Monitor. Untap Lanamor Elves. Brazen Borrower. Turn it to a ground creature. Ooh, Void Grafter. That's actually fine, though, because this means we get to resolve Pian Care Nalar, which is also very good. Play an island, run out Pian Care Nalar. Pass the turn, so now we have a blocker for this petty thief. And now we're more or less where we want to be. Opponent, untap land. Opponent, combat, passes. Okay, Neoform. We're actually pretty close to winning. I'll make a food. Play the planes. Shalai. Pass the turn. Brineborn Cutthroat. And Brineborn Cutthroat. All right. Opponent's building a board. But we're... If only we didn't have to worry about counters, I feel like we'd be safe to combo off. We're very close. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Opponent. Passes. Hmm. And I'll turn on the food. Go to combat. Attack. Opponent takes it. And, ugh. yeah, let's just pass. Pass the turn. Another Brineborn Cutthroat. Well, we might be winning on our backup, backup, backup plan, which is just to grow our team with Shalai. Trickster. Well, let's grow the dorks. Untap. Opponent. Combat. No attacks. Well, let's go for Neoform. Neoform, Pian Carrot. Get Dark Dweller. Dark Dweller, Neoform. Neoform Dark Dweller into Locust God. Ugh. Make a food. Pass the turn. I'm a little afraid of going for it. There's so many ways we can get blown out here. Opponent. Next turn we gotta go we're gonna go for it regardless. Merfolk Trickster actually would have fizzled our combo kill. Opponent. Gonna tap Shalai. Actually, I guess it wouldn't have because we had sh yeah i guess we probably should have just went for it there honestly opponent plays a land i didn't really want to sack shalai because shalai seems very good here to get sage of ours but we probably should have just went for it opponent no attacks well let's loot discard locust god make a thopter or an insect untap make an insect play vanifar temple garden untapped now now we're definitely going for it Neoform, Zach Manifar, Sage. And here we go. Can you beat Infinite Flyers? We can make, what, 37 more? That should be enough, especially with Shalai out. I mean, Ponet build a big board, but we build as big of a board. And then we get to go Infinite, which feels pretty good. Feels not bad at all. Yup. Discard. Yup. Discard. Yup. Discard. 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 I guess our opponent gets to see our whole deck, which is somewhat helpful for them. Keep discarding. We need enough flyers to win the game. We're getting close. They all have hexproof. They all have haste. Loot, loot, loot. And this should be enough, right? All right, this has got to be enough. So we'll say no. We'll go to combat. Huge attack. Uh, 27 Thopters and a Locust God, I guess. Opponent takes it. And that's what the deck can do through the counters. Okay, that went pretty well. Opponent 
their deck seemed to do what it was hoping to do, but we managed to uh, to sneak through. Display of Dominance. Destroy blue knight. Permits you control. Can't make target blue back spells. All right, Mystical Dispute. I don't think we want Disdainful Stroke. Ooze, Revoker, Knight of Autumn. What do we cut is the question. I hate cutting Once Upon a Time because our mana is so greedy, but I think it's uh, worth it. Uh, all right, we got the back. I guess this hand's okay. Opponent. Scry land. Ant. Passes. Eh, all right. Hippocamp. Well, we got some flashy stuff, too. Pass the turn. Four is for our opponent. Botanical Sanctum, and eh, all right. Corridor Monitor. Hooray. <laughs> Not that exciting on its own, for sure. Pass the turn. Uh, opponent. Temple of Mystery. Scries to the bottom. Well, play a forest. Land of Elves. I guess we could have, could have, should have, would have played a uh, breeding pool. Hopefully that's not an issue. Hit our opponent. Pass the turn. Opponent ops. Breeding pool. Untapped. And passes. I'll play the island. Go to combat. Get in with the corridor monitor. Opponent takes it. Down to 16. All right. I guess this is as good a time as any to sabot. Hinterland Harbor for our opponent. Combat. Passes, starts making wolves. Play breeding pool. Go to combat. Attack with salmon. Opponent takes it. Well, pass the turn. Another ambusher? Hmm. Well, we will hippocamp. Untap land of war. Opponent, combat. No attacks. Makes a million wolves. Oh, that's not great. I'll play a forest. Call. Uh, does our opponent have a counter? Ugh, Frilled Mystic. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. All right, uh, pass the turn. Well, now we're in a pretty bad spot. Ugh. Opponent. Combat. Attacks. Sure. We take four billion. Two Nightpack Ambushers is a lot. That is a lot to beat. Opponent passing. Well, Reflector Mage. Not that it actually even does anything. Opponent gonna counter they have a counter you could see it light up but not gonna counter and i'll bounce an ambusher i guess but i feel like we're already pretty far behind here already super far behind all right void grafter sure 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 well that went a lot less good ay 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 um ha huh. what do we do about this Neoform is a little... Maybe we do want Disdainful Strokes, and we go down Neoform Land of War. Neoform's a little risky with our opponent playing so many counters. Very easy to just get absolutely blowed out. All right, we get to play first. This hand is so slow. We're going to mulligan. Uh, this hand is... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This hand is worse. The counter spell matchups seem like our hardest matchups, for sure. Well, going to five. Oh, boy. Okay. So we've learned two things. Uh, the deck is really sweet when it works. The deck also has extremely bad mana. <sighs> okay. I mean, I guess we won't scoop, but I don't think there's any winning from here. Opponent plays an island, passes, and Atlanta War Elves. Botanical Sanctum, go. Opponent plays a land, passes. Corridor Monitor, untap Atlanta War, pass the turn. Opponent plays a land, plays a cutthroat, passes. Well, hollowed fountain tapped, pass the turn. Yeah, four cards is not many. Opponent, trickster, taps, corridor monitor, untaps. So, good news is the deck is really sweet when it comes together. Slightly less good news is the mana is pretty rough, and that does lead to a lot of mulligans. All right. Uh, yeah, pass the turn. This one's feeling pretty over. Okay. Yeah, this one's very over. Oh! Alright, 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 alright. Hmm. Alright. Alright. Much brew about nothing time. We are looking to Beck Call our way through Pioneer. Infinite Beck Call combo. This hand... Eh, I mean, I guess we keep it. Sadly, because we have Oko. <laughs> but we do have Prime Speaker, too. So we're not that far away from comboing. But in theory, once upon a time, can Mana Dork us maybe into, into Oko, into Prime Speaker? 
We have very nicely untapped mana, although we are missing some colors. Planes for our opponent, and oh boy, Venerable Knight. This is going to be interesting. Can we keep up with the- oh, there's our missing combo piece. All right, once upon a time, mana dork us. Ugh, no mana dork. Um, we'll take Fabled Passage, I guess. All right, that's less than ideal. If our opponent has a fast start, we could be in trouble here. We did find our back, though, so that does mean... That does mean if we get to Prime Speaker Vanifar, we should be able to... Ooh, opponent passes. All right, Botanical Sanctum, that's good news. Oko should at least distract our opponent while we're getting to this Vanifar, hopefully. Shove it, dudes. Pwn it. Okay, <laughs> grows the Venerable Knight, sure. Pwn it. And I guess the food can gain us life, so we might actually be okay here. Opponent hits us. Down to 50. Ooh, that's good too. All right. Uh, we have a lot of what we need. Oko. Make a foo. We're, we're two turns away from winning, I believe. Pass the turn. So next turn we can Vanifar. The following turn, hopefully... Yeah, we can we can just win with Neoform. Acclaim Contender, sure. I mean, this is assuming our opponent can't kill our Vanifar. If they can kill our Vanifar, then things go a little more poorly. What does Acclaim Contender find? Another Acclaim Contender. Chain them together. Pwn it. Go on face or Oko? Go on Oko. Sure, sure, sure. Oko down to three. And opponent passes. All right, Fabled Passage. Crack it. Get a mountain, I guess? Actually, no. Uh, let's take a forest. We want green, blue, green, blue. All right, take a forest. Run out Prime Speaker Vanifar. Turn on the food. Pass the turn. All right, opponent. You need something, or else we win the game this coming turn. Pwn it. Blades. Benelish Marshall. That does not stop us from going infinite. Pwn it. Everything in our face, we will food block. So as long as Vanifar lives, we just win here. Down to 11. Yup, yup, yup. Sure. Opponent passes. All right. So, boom, boom. We will back. Boom, boom. Neoform away Vanifar. Get... Dark Dweller. Dark Dweller for Neoform. Neoform. Sack Dark Dweller. Get Locust God, the pretty one. And now we go infinite. All right. Uh, that was not bad. Turn five. Turn five infinite. And now we make enough tokens to kill our opponent. We can make eh, 40 more. An opponent knows what's happening, knows it's over, scoops it up, and okay. <laughs> the deck is actually really sort of kind of officially working all right opponent playing night tribal will bring in two settle the wreckages i guess uh i don't know if we change much else we can probably go down shalai and maybe a once upon a time actually maybe we keep shalai Let's go down both Once Upon a Times. Shalai, we're playing a white deck. Our opponent could potentially have Settle the Wreckage, which is a way to beat our combo. So I think it makes sense to to leave in Shalai as protection, potentially. Potential protection. Uh, So far, so good for this deck, though. It's possible we should be bringing in some life gain, like Knight of Autumn, just to slow our opponent down. Although, it went fine that game. Our opponent does not have much interaction, so we should be free to hopefully set up our combo. <sighs> All right. Well, I mean, we're going to keep this. We have ramp. We have back call. I guess we do need a blue source. Opponent passes. Uh, yeah, let's just tap land. Pass the turn. Ugh, maybe we can't cut once upon a time because we needed to fix our mana. That is one of the more common ways we've lost so far is just not having our mana work out. Ooh, worthy knight. Okay. Opponent, give us blue mana deck. You can do it. You can do it. Uh, Samet. Okay, Samet's... Kind of interesting. Not as interesting as blue mana, but that is a way we can potentially eat a attacker randomly. Opponent's going to start going wide, I assume, with knights. Opponent. Tapping. Untapping. Benelish Marshall. Ooh, yeah, that is uh, that is scary. Settle the wreckage, please. Opponent. Gets in for three down to 17. And... Well, Fabled Passage go... Uh, this might just be too slow. I guess the only good news is we can potentially just draw combo pieces to maybe win. But we are pretty far behind the eight ball here with with this clock. We're taking eight this turn. And then even a Samet on defense is still... Uh, okay. Well, no Samet next turn. Oh, dear. I'll crack this. Grab our eyelid. Ooh, yeah, we're we're not in the best of places at the moment. Opponent untaps, gets it, hits us, down to nine. 
Oh, our mana's just not supporting our combo here. Pass the turn. Hmm. We have back. We have Neoform, but we're not even especially close to casting both. Opponent plays a land. Knight of the White Orchid makes a knight. So I think our only sort of hope is to ambush here. I think, honestly, we're going to have to draw Settle. Settle is our is our pseudo out. Well, we will Breaching Hippocamp. Hmm. We could Neoform. Yeah, that doesn't do anything. Uh, our mana, we have the combo, but our mana just doesn't let us actually cast it. So Hippocamp, eat a worthy knight, drop to seven. Acclaim Contender. Oh, we actually, if our mana was better this game, we actually would have won. Opponent passes. Back. All right. Yep. Huh. Well, as bad as that went for us, we actually had a lot of ways to win that game. I think maybe cutting once upon a time is not actually something we should do. <laughs> Let's go down Shalai. Probably worrying about our opponent randomly having settle is a little, a little over the top. Go down Shalai. Go down. Ugh. What else can we cut? Lana War and leave the Once Upon a Times. Try it like that. All right. So we are on the play, and this hand, ugh, it's not great, but we're going to keep it. We got the Settle, and the Settle is one of our best cards in this matchup. So we're going to keep it, hope that it actually works out. Sacred Foundry, go. Opponent, Night Away, opponent, Night Away. Dauntless Bodyguard, sure. Opponent, passes. Huh, eh, back's not bad. Let's just play a tap land. Pass the turn. Back is combo piece number one. So if we find our other pieces, it could be good. Opponent, going to smash us for two. Down to 18. Planes and a worthy knight. Well, good thing we got this settle. All right, Gilded Goose is not bad, but I think we need to run out corridor monitor so we have a blocker we basically in this matchup i think we win the long game but we need to stay alive and corridor monitor while in our deck to be a combo piece is actually a pretty good pretty good wall here against our opponent's knights chef it dunes uh that'll be a problem eventually if our opponent can go wide with with their knights and worthy knight uh, about it combat oh okay uh, uh maybe this is a trap but let's block is this going to work? Okay. That was a interesting attack. So we eat a knight. We take two. Opponent plays Thalia, which is actually kind of obnoxious. Uh, let's just Gilded Goose. So one of our issues here uh, is we don't actually have the mana if we draw our combo. <laughs> to combo off with, like, Neoform Beck Call, we need double blue, double green. So we're still a mana source short. Opponent, Dauntless Bodyguard Part 2, which is a bit clunky. Opponent's board, getting big. And Knight of Grace. <sighs> Our opponent already played around a, a settle once, so they might be wary of running into settle here in the future. Opponent gets in, gets in. Well, we block, we take two. Down to 14. Okay. Well, good thing we got this settle. Opponent passes. Hmm. Oko. Ha. Now play the mountain. <sighs> do we Oko? I think... Uh, I don't know. What does Oko do here other than gain us a bunch of life? I guess it can make a 3-3 from the food and then our opponent probably attacks it. It might be... I think we might just pass hippocamp that probably is better this also lets us leave up settle so if our opponent does something silly like swing with literally everything we can just blow them out that's probably that's probably fine if our opponent yeah let's just pass and if our opponent all out attacks we'll settle if they only attack with a couple things we can get down hippocamp and hippocamp is kind of important it means if we draw like another blue or green source and neoform then we get to go infinite with a uh, back call although we are still missing the mana at the moment which is really that's one of the clunky aspects of this deck i think is the mana is a bit questionable that is a a bit of a concern about it let's see how they attack here Ooh. Ooh, if they attack with all this, I think we probably settle. Getting rid of the Worthy Knight would be nice. Oh, all right. Hmm. Well, this is a very conservative attack. Block, block, take one. Well, we're definitely not settling to get rid of just that. Opponent, ooh, History Banalia. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, let's run out Hippocamp. 
nice and tappy. Doesn't really, doesn't really matter. Well, I guess actually, huh, we probably maybe should have run that out during combat to eat a blocker because we could untap Hippocamp with itself. <sighs> now we kind of got the same question. Do we Oko? Do we settle? I guess we just pass again? Next turn, we could potentially Oko and leave up settle, which seems nice. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're actually, we're actually getting kind of close to just fusing Beck Call. A little bit worse with Thally out, because we, ooh, all right, deck and stone. Sure. Well, maybe this gets our opponent to go on a really big attack, and we get to blow them out with settle. Attack, 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 attack. All right. Well, this still doesn't feel especially settle worthy. Block, block. Yeah, down to nine. Crack our clue, draw a card. Well, okay. The second resource mana is actually kind of helpful here. Or, I guess it's not second, it's like fourth. But that means we have double blue, double green, easily. Even without Gilded Goose. Let's just pass. This turn, our opponent's probably gotta go out a reasonably big attack with History of Benali going off. So this is probably a good settle turn. If we can ever get rid of Thalia, we can fuse this back call and make a bunch of blockers and draw a bunch of cards. Opponent goes attacking. Well, yeah, I guess this is as good as it gets. Settle you. We're actually in pretty a pretty fragile spot here. We don't have any blockers. I guess Oko is help. Ugh. Claim contender. Well, let's go digging with Once Upon a Time. Looking for... Ugh. Dark Dweller and lands. Well, let's take... I guess Dark Dweller. Might as well. We already got a million lands. Worst case, I guess Dark Dweller can be a blocker and flashback Once Upon a Time to get another another look for like a Vanifar or something. All right. Claim contender. Opponent goes digging. See what they find. Ugh, circle of loyalty. Okay. Uh, they can play it right now if they want to. Although that does open it up to Oko. Elkifying. I guess if it's only two mana, they might as well wait. They can't activate it anyway. They only got two cards in hand and a million mana things to settle. <laughs> We're, the downside of these settles, uh, or this settle, we got another one in our deck, is ugh, more Okos. Well, all right. I guess it's Oko time. Uh, the downside of the settle plan is... It does mean our opponent's getting a lot of lands out of their deck, so their odds of drawing action probably going up significantly. Uh, play Oko. I think we just... Well, we gotta tap differently. Uh, so I think we Oko, and this is probably it for our turn. We can Oko animate the food, and then I think we wait till next... We could have Thalia here, but we can't really cast anything anyway. We need the defense, or we risk dying to... Chef at Dunes plus Pump Spell. So this allows us to make another blocker. We can make a food with Gilded Goose. If we're going to die, we can sack the food to gain some life. And then maybe next turn, we can turn Thalia into an Elk so our stuff doesn't come into play untapped and use Beck Call to make four 1-1s one and draw four. That does eliminate a combo piece in our hand, but drawing a bunch of cards sounds nice. Opponent, Circle of Loyalty, grows the dorks. Well, let's see how our opponent attacks here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh. All right. Conclave Tribunal gets rid of Oko. Sure. We're mostly fine with that because we already have another Oko in hand. Opponent, acclaim contender, getting in there. Okay. We're at nine. I guess, yeah, this is probably fine. Eat the token, take four to five, and then make a food end of turn. Opponent does have mana to make a knight, too. Got to keep that in mind. All right, make a food. Untap. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, That's good news. Now we get to Oko again. I think we keep waiting, though, on dealing with this Thalia. It's so tempting. Okay, let's just do it. It is annoying. And I guess, since we have Settle at hand now, it's a little more appealing to do this. So we could Settle this turn... Basically, no matter what. Untap, we have the mana to fuse back call, and hopefully that just stabilizes the board. And then at some point, we could still still Dark Dweller for this once upon a time if we need to. Uh, put it. Deck and stone, Hippocamp. Sure. This actually might be a good thing. Getting a Hippocamp might make our opponent attack with more. It's hard to play around the second settle. The first one, you can kind of try to play around. The second one, it's a lot a lot harder to play around the second one. Were they sacking Sheffit dudes? Oh, 
Oh, okay. Oh, the second set was going to be so good. Opponent, combat. One, two, three. All right. Yeah, uh, good enough. We get to settle. And now we're in pretty good shape. Even without our combo, we're in pretty good shape. Get rid of the board. Opponent gets a million more lands. Sure, sure, sure. Opponent's only got one card in hand, though. And now we get to untap Infuse Beck Call to draw a million. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I mean, this is this is perfect. That's definitely not our plan to just get to a man and fuse bet call, but we'll take it. That's four blockers if we can tap properly. Four blockers and also four cards. <laughs> oh, not something I actually expected to do with this deck, but uh, sure. Draw, draw, draw. Ooh, Locust God. Prime, okay. Well, we're still short on combo pieces, but we have plenty of defense. Now, actually, <laughs> we might just... We might just be able to win by... Yeah, let's get rid of a uh, Worthy Knight. It's still going to be a 3-3, three, three, but... That, why is it a 4-4? Four, four? Huh. Oh, it pumps all creatures. Okay. I was thinking Circle of Loyalty only pumped Knights, but it uh, it pumps all creatures. All right. Knight of the White Orchid, sure. I mean, that's still fine. What we don't want is our opponent to somehow, like, chain together acclaimed contenders and make a bunch of tokens and kill us that way. Opponent goes attacking. We will trade and chump. And now we just have so many more cards in our opponent, and some good ones. We might just win with the natural Locust God plan this game. So, yeah. I mean, Pulse got zero cards in hand. I think we just run out Locust God. We can even sack the clue to draw a card and make a token at some point. Uh, hmm. What do we do with Oko? We don't really have anything good for trading. Let's just make a food. Play a Fabled Passage past the turn so opponent can keep making knights with circle of loyalty so they do have something sort of going on but i think we're in pretty good shape now the second settle was devastating our opponent survived the first one pretty well but the second one second one was a lot to actually keep up with opponent adapts venerable knight uh-huh 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 uh opponent gets in gets in or not all right, opponent goes attacking. Well, we will eat the token, chump, chump. Our 1-1 one, one flyers are pretty replaceable now, and we're actually not that far away from comboing off still. Like, we can we can run out Prime Speaker, and that sets us up to get Sage the following turn and win. So crack the clue, draw a card, make a 1-1, one, one. and more lands. All right, undap, P and Karen Nalar, make a 1-1. One, one. I actually don't even know if we need the combo now. Run out Vanifar. I mean, we do have the combo next turn if we need it. Let's... Eh, could get rid of Circle of Loyalty. Let's just... Maybe we just steal a creature. Yeah, steal Venerable Knight. I mean, now we just have to survive a turn. That's it. As long as we make a big enough board to survive a turn, we can go infinite next turn if we need to. Run out Pian Make some dorks. I mean... We probably will go infinite because it's sweet, but I don't actually think we necessarily need to go infinite. We probably we could probably just win fairly here if we wanted to. Hit our opponent down to 15. And opponent. Gonna make a knight. Well, opponent needs something really good. They need something that probably isn't even in their deck. Minimum, they gotta answer... I don't even know. I guess they gotta answer Vanifar. Definitely silence. We don't actually have to cast spells to win this game, so that is super fine. And I think that does it. I think now we just go infinite. We can Prime Speaker away PN Karen to get Sage and infinite one ones attack you. Huh. Well, I mean, that was kind of impressive in its own weird way. About it. Thinking. Attacking. Yeah, I mean, I think our opponent knows it's slipping away. They're they're hoping we forget to block or something at this point. Block, block, block. Oops. Block, block. Just chump everything. I mean, opponent's got zero cards. We go infinite when we untap. There's no reason to do anything tricky. Opponent passes. Well, another Vanifar, sure. And now we combo. Prime Speaker, sack P and Karen, get Sage. And now we loot until we make enough flyers to kill our opponent. Discard. I mean, we just draw and discard anything. We make 30, 32 1 1 flyers. Which, we don't even need that many. We only need 15 to kill our opponent, and even less because we already have some. And opponent gives us the GGs. All right. All right, all right, all right. Opponent scoops it up, and that was pretty good. Maybe this deck actually kind of works. I mean, 
I guess we kind of got a little lucky to draw two settles, but still, still, not bad, not bad, not bad. We'll take it, Cabo, going infinite. Oh, sweet. So what do we learn this week about infinite back combo for Pioneer? And we played five matches. We won three of them, which for a pretty out there Fishbowl Thursday deck, not a bad record, a winning record, technically. We did lose to Control kind of hilariously to Ashiok while we drew Neoforms for multiple turns in a row with Prime Speaker out. That was a brutal loss. Uh, we also got got by Simic Flash. That match, I think, illuminates one of the problems with the deck. And the problem is... Is the mana base, it is very clunky. That is one of the biggest challenges. Remember, we're playing Pioneer, so you don't have real fetch lands. We do have a couple fabled passages, and we're trying to assemble this really unruly concoction of stuff. The biggest challenge we were at to some matchups is to actually use Neoform and Beck Call in the same turn. We need double blue and double green, which isn't actually a given in this mana base, where we have uh, some sacred foundries, off-color basic lands, etc., etc. So we ran into some weird issues with the mana, which I think is just part of the challenge. We also had games where we just had to, like, mulligan aggressively, because we didn't have green mana in our opening hand to go with our mana dorks. So that's kind of the bad news of the deck, is sometimes it loses to itself, based on the very ambitious mana base. Not sure there's an easy solution to that. I think that's kind of just the cost of being a four-color deck in the Pioneer format. On the other hand, we also have some really spectacular wins, and the combo is surprisingly effective, and if we kind of mulligan a bit aggressively to try to find some combo pieces, we can actually set it up pretty consistently. We had, I think, one turn four win and a few turn five wins with the combo, and also, we can technically win with the backup plan as well, where some games, we just kind of, like, stabilize and then play a bunch of stuff, play a Locust God naturally, make some tokens, maybe P and Karen, value, prime speaker up the curve and we can win games like that anyway so we're a deck that can kind of win the fair plan but also just has this weird surprising infinite combo so i think the deck feels I would say semi-competitive to me. It's a, it's definitely a deck that can win a lot of games, although it does lose to itself a little bit too often. I think maybe something we have to look at is more Once Upon a Times. I know throughout our matches, I was sometimes sideboarding out Once Upon a Time. That might have been a mistake on my part. It might be that we actually need to just be playing four Once Upon a Times, not so much to find creatures, but to make sure our mana works, which actually is kind of a challenge for the deck. So I think that might be one thing to consider. The problem is, to make our combo work, we need a lot of combo pieces. We need the four backs. Neoform, important combo piece. Prime Speaker, combo piece. And then a lot of our other creatures, if you work our way up the curve, minus the Mana Dorks, which I think we also need to just speed up the deck, we need, like, double Corridor Monitor in case we draw one. We need multiple three mana ways to work up the curve. We need multiple Breaching Hippocaps. We need multiple copies of Samet to work our way up the Vanifar curve. So it really limits the number of slots in the deck. In theory, we could drop Oko, which uh, I guess maybe that would be the right thing to do from a fun perspective, just because Oko not the most popular card at the moment, but Oko is admittedly one of our best backup plans. We sometimes, and we saw this in some of our matches, uh, especially the control match, the game we won there, we just turn one mana door, turn two Oko, and that was enough for us to kind of parlay into a win, killing a bunch of planeswalkers along the way. So I think maybe that's necessary. So I don't know if there's a way to actually improve the deck. I feel like for what the deck is trying to do, which is be able to go all the way up the curve with Vanifar, be able to, as consistently as possible, Locust God, go infinite either with Beck or with Sage of the Falls, and Sage of the Falls was very key. We got a lot of Sage of the Falls wins. For what this deck is trying to accomplish, I feel like this is actually a very solid build of it. The problem is what the deck is trying to accomplish requires a lot of colors, and then those colors sometimes give us trouble or make us mulligan a lot. So that's kind of the downside. So maybe find a way to squeeze in more once upon a times. Maybe cut the Okos, even though it's just a busted card. Maybe we could go down the Lana War Elves, which doesn't really fix our mana uh, for more once upon a times. And trust it, once upon a time, if our mana's good, will help us find Gilded Goose so we have a mana dork. Or if our mana's bad, we can find a land that we need to make our colors. So I think that's something to consider. Going up once upon a time. Other than that, in the mana issues, I really like the deck. And it was surprisingly effective, and it's really cool and it's really unique and really fun so i enjoyed it hopefully you all enjoyed it as well anyway that's been our bunch of room for this week infinite back 
combo for Pioneer. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.